Hey guys, thanks for watching. Maria Mitchell here. Today I'm going to show you how to face paint with these Star Blend powders. You can use any brand um, of face painting powders for the techniques that we are about to learn in this tutorial um, using these Smoothie Blender or Lollipop sponge applicators. I'll show you how to use those in a minute. Star blends or face painting powders are absolutely brilliant in the summertime, I think. They're great in humid climates. You don't get the streaks that you get when sponging on face paints. They apply nice and smoothly using a um, lollipop applicator, a sponge, which is basically like um, what you get when you buy eyeshadow and you have a sponged tip of the applicator that's basically what these are and it just allows you to pick up some of that powder and apply it onto the skin they're also great for covering large areas so if you're doing a spider-man and you need to cover a large area of the face it's a lot easier to grab your smoothie blender and just apply it on you're basically just applying it on like this and it's quite effective. You don't have to worry about mucking around with water consistency on your sponge when caking on um, ordinary face paints. So I use my powders dry. Some people do like to get their sponges wet or their applicators wet to apply. I personally like to keep it dry um, because I find that if you get water on your powder they do tend to go a little bit hard and it's a little bit harder to um, pick up the powder when it's dry. So what I'm going to do here I'm just going to do a little background I'll give you an example of how we use them for backgrounds and I've just picked up some pink just by rubbing my applicator on the pink and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gently Press it on and slide it through the skin just like that. Not much to it, it's super easy. Now I'm just gonna grab a split cake from my Global Colors palette. And I'm gonna pick up some of that white and that turquoise or aqua right there. So what I would do, say for instance, if I wanted to use some flowers here, just as a background, I'll just do some petals. And then this serves as a background, let's say. The pink serves as a background, let's say, for our little design. Just a rough flower eye design, just to give you an example. So there we have a really pretty little um, background for say a nice flower design, just on the corner of the eye. So there's an example of how we can use our Star Blend as a background for any face painting design by quickly just um, using our Smoothie Blender and blending it in. For this particular design, I just want to do um, a sunset background. I'll give you an example of how we can blend colours in um, to give us a gradient effect. So with this Smoothie Blender, I've just loaded up some of this red and I'm just going to cover right down the bottom of the eye, stretching right down. I'm gonna grab my other smoothie blender. I like to use both sides on colors that I use regularly together. So I'll use one side of this smooth, smoothie blender applicator for the orange color. And then on the other side, I normally use orange and yellow for tigers. So. I like to keep them nice and close and it makes it easy when loading up on the job in a hurry. So just creating a sunset. Now with my yellow side of my smoothie blender, I'm just going to continue the sunset with the yellow right up the top. And obviously if it's a real eye, we can carry 
on these colors onto the eyelid. And because it's not like using paint that's sponged on, we're not getting really close to the eye. A lot of people don't like to feel that sensation of wet paint near their eyes. A lot of the time I do like to use my finger and I do like to smooth it all in together. Just gonna do a little palm trick. Just bear in mind also, just a tip for when using paint on top of powders, it's a good idea to keep your brush nicely loaded and have a really heavily loaded brush with more so water than paint, I find, um, because a lot of the powder does absorb the paint from your brush. Up more water will just make that load go a long way. White is a great one for when we're doing skulls for full faces. Um, it's just easier to apply quickly. As I said, we don't have to wet our sponge or anything like that. And it's just a lot easier to apply. I also do like to use white for making Dalmatian face paintings. Okay, just again, so say this is a child's face. If I'm doing a Dalmatian, I'll normally on the side of, of their face um, do the Dalmatian ears along there to where their cheekbones are and then I will just connect that with the white makes it super easy to do this and um, just along where their cheeks are I'll fill all that in obviously where we do the muzzle it just takes no time to cover a large area of a child's face So by using the powder, it's really given me um, a broad amount of coverage in a, in, in a minimal amount of time. Now, because I don't have a model, I am gonna use my hand as a mouth. So let's say this is a human's mouth. I'll give you an example of how um, I do skulls. So say I've covered the whole face white, including the lips. So my smoothie blender and so my powders are really giving me a really great coverage all around. With my brush, with some black loaded, I draw the teeth. So say for the tops of the teeth, just to make them look like they're 3D and they're popping out, I like to just dip the tip of my smoothie blender into the black powder and then just slightly flick some shadowing inward. And so sliding and then by flicking into the teeth, we give it the illusion that it's um, three-dimensional. Flicking into the teeth. We can use black to give depth to certain things and to make it look as though it's popping up. And when we're face painting a skull, obviously, Putting black around the eye tends to get a little bit messy. So I like to just um, use my smoothie blender to cover in around the eyes as um, they're closing their eyes, just for maximum coverage. And it's nice and smooth, as you can see. It doesn't come on streaky or anything like that. It's just very easy to use. We can also use powders to 
um, make some ears. So if we're drawing a unicorn horn and we've got ears on the other on each side, we can draw some ears on like that, put some inner in there with the other side where my with the other side of the smoothie blender where my yellow is, fill that in. And then obviously it's always good to outline just to define that ear. And there you have an ear, just using your smoothie blender, applying your face painting powder. Okay, so for this example, I've just pinched my husband's arm here because um, it's quite difficult to do it with, uh, with one hand. So I've just loaded up a sponge with a rainbow cake by Silly Farm and I've just made a background here and I just want to show you how I can, how we can apply stars through a stencil, whatever stencil you have, you can apply over um, through a stencil over a background. Um, I've used this one early on today, so it hasn't been cleaned yet, so don't mind the mess on it. Now, what we'll do is grab our smoothie applicator or smoothie blender, lollipop applicator, sponge, whatever you want to call it. Some people you actually use sponges as well to apply. Um, so it really depends on what tickles your fancy. When I'm actually doing this on a child, I like to ask them to press their head toward my hand. And then that way I've got that stencil nicely and firm. That's what we want to aim is to have it nicely and firm. So what I'm just gonna do is just transfer all of that white powder onto the skin through the stencil. And there we have some pretty stars. And that's just another way of um, using your powder. So that's all you need to know for face painting with powders. If you ever do crack your face painting powders, which sometimes they do because in your kit, obviously your kit gets thumbled about as you get from job to job. And sometimes they do tend to crack. So check out my video right here on how to fix up your cracked up face painting powders and that will um, get you back on track. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you for the next one. Happy painting. Thanks for watching. If you got something out of this, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any face painting related questions or you need something that you need clarified, make sure you comment down below and I'll do my absolute best to share my knowledge with you in the next video. I'm on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to follow me so we don't miss each other for the next one. Until next time, happy painting.